Rose. How are you? Mm, I'm well, thank you. <laughs> so good to see you, Rose. Oh, I'm so excited. It's Tuesday. It's my favourite day of the week. It's the day that we do the Healing Through Love show. So welcome to the Healing Through Love show. We're here today to increase awareness within the community about providing family and domestic violence survivors with a soft place to land. <laughs> And, uh, and Rose, you've got some information to share with us today. As well as the Healing Through Love show, sorry, we hold annual paper days for survivors in South Australia and Tasmania, where local businesses pay it forward to give our survivors a much deserved day of joy. And each week on the show, we interview experts and survivors who share their personal stories and advice to those who have experienced abuse, no matter where they are on their journey. Yeah, it's so important. So today we've got a very special guest with us and Rose is going to nick off and go do some things behind the scene. Thanks, Rose. She won't be far away because she'll be joining us back again towards the end where we've got information to share with you about what's happening next with Healing Through Love. And, and if you see the show today and you're excited and you've got something to share, we'd love to have you along as a guest. So reach out to Healing Through Love. We're always looking to share information with new people. Now, today we've got a very special guest, a personal friend of mine, in fact, Tammy Horton. Depression, anxiety, worthlessness, self-loathing, wounds that are visible, are invisible to others. Not a mark or a bruise in sight. Trapped in a cycle of saying, it's not that bad. And minimising your behaviour. To wanting to be treated with kindness and respect and needing to get out. Our next guest, Tammy Horton, spent over 20 years trying to fix her husband, not realising that she was part of the one in four women experiencing emotional abuse in Australia. It's astronomical numbers, girls, one in four. In 2013, Tammy packed her car and, she, and all that she had, including her two youngest children, and she got out. And she's here today to tell you that she's risen from the ashes. She is the phoenix and now helps others to move forward in their place. Hi, Tammy, how are you? Tammy, we can't hear you. So we'll just get Tammy to fix her sound. And I'm pretty excited because I'd love Tammy to actually start today to talk with us about, about her story because I really believe that's how we connect, by sharing our story, sharing our wounds don't you believe that, Tammy? Tammy, I still can't hear you. So we'll just get Tammy to fix that. And girls, if you're listening today and you've got a challenge and you've been through something, you know, we do find that sharing your story with other people is the thing that begins the healing journey. So, you know, start with having those conversations. Is there someone that you can trust that you can have a conversation with? You know, a cup of tea and just a bit of a sit down. It starts, that's how it starts the healing process. Hi, Tammy. I don't know. I, can you hear you now? Yes, we can hear you now, Tammy. Tammy, I was just saying it'd be great if you could just expand on your story and tell us a little bit about, you know, what happened and, and how you got out. Okay. So, um, yeah, so what that introduction kind of says that I was in a relationship where I was trying to fix my husband um, and now ex-husband, of course, and he has now passed away that now so I kind of still didn't need to respect his memory um because he is the the dad of my kids but um a, a lot of years of emotional psychological financial abuse um I was the sole income earner earning a fair amount of money but I only ever got a hundred dollars a fortnight that was my spending money and even then I had to you know explain what I did with the hundred dollars so many things went on I my struggled with my mental health a lot um, have done ever since I was a teenager, uh, but being in that relationship just made things worse, having kids and postnatal depression, a few other bits and pieces. Um, but I got to a point in 2013 where I was um, feeling like I was sliding into a black hole again and I didn't want to be there anymore. And um, someone at work, you know, I was talking with them about some struggles that they were having in their relationship and we got talking and, you know, he said, well, you know, you're you're an amazing woman, you're, you know, you're smart, you're intelligent, you're funny, you know, you don't need to be in this relationship anymore. And it, it that was kind of a little bit of a wake-up call that, oh, hang on, someone's noticed. 
me and I can't go back to where I had been before because I've been suicidal on multiple occasions so I wasn't going back there again so I had to get out um unfortunately I you know being me I gave my partner forewarning that I was leaving I said I was going to leave at the end of the year um which of course escalated his behavior um which made it even more imperative that I had to get out because it, it was through that process that I really realized that I'd become very broken and I wasn't the person that I was born to be or wanted to be anymore. And in order to be a role model for my three girls, I had to get out and do something different. So I did, I packed up my car as if it was a normal day for me going to work, taking the kids to school, but I'd been packing stuff in and I reversed out of the driveway after, you know, him trying to get him out of the way of me, of course, but, you know, I left and luckily my mum had an empty house that I could go and stay at, otherwise I would have been homeless. And I've kind of rebirthed from there since 2013. Wow, what a story. And uh, would you say as a word of advice for those who are planning to leave to perhaps having not announce it uh, to escalate the issue and yeah. uh, and find a way to do it in secret uh, to uh, to aid in the escape? Yeah, absolutely. Um, be, be prepared to leave. So start making preparations, but don't, by all means, don't advertise the fact that you're going. Um, reach out for help before you're going because it's at that time when you leave that you're going to need the most amount of support because it's the most dangerous time. So make sure you've got those plans in place before you leave so that you've got as much support as possible to get you through. Um, if you can, you know, secret away some money that so that you've got something to start with, line up somewhere where you can go and stay, all that type of thing. Work out what it is you want to take with you. Excellent. Yeah. Don't announce it. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self, girls, don't announce. Yes. So, uh, Tammy, now let's wind the clocks forward now, almost mm -hmm. now 10 years, uh, eight years, and uh, and share with the with with all of our listeners that uh, where are you right now? Because it's great for us to share that wound of where we were. So that gives us an opportunity to identify and uh, and you know and even though we shouldn't, we still compare a little bit. So it gives us an opportunity to say, okay, you know, it's okay. And now tell us where you are now, so that we can see the gap that you've progressed through. And that's going to give a lot of our listeners who are still in those early days hope of what is to come. Uh, okay, so now um, I am super happy. I know who I am, whereas before I didn't, I haven't even had the faintest clue of who I was or what I was meant to be doing in the world. Now I have left the public service where I was for 27 years. Um, I have started my own business. I've started a business called Phoenix Initiative, and it is all about mental health training and coaching and getting people to be the best that they can be despite everything that they have going on around them. Um, so, yeah, so I've got this business that's growing. Um, I'm now a speaker. I've co-authored a book. Um, I've got another book in the works. And I now have a circle of people around me that are just positive and uplifting and validating. And I've had to do an awful lot of work on myself to work out, you know, how I ended up being in the space I was. But through that process, um, which is part of the stuff that I teach now about being a phoenix is identifying everything that was keeping me stuck in that relationship, everything that was holding me back. I've reframed all of that stuff with a lot of work and then now I just, you know, live each day with a fire in my belly to live the life of a phoenix, which is passionate, hopeful, young at heart, noetic, indomitable and extraordinary. So it is it is possible to do. It's a lot of hard work, but you can't do it alone. You have to reach out for help. And that's what I found. Um, help came from the most amazing, weird and wonderful places sometimes. So I had one lady who ran a security company who I'd never met. I just got introduced to her through someone else and she said, if you ever feel unsafe, ring me on this number. I'll send two security guards around to protect you. I um, To try and get out of my shell, I went to a meetup event, which was a trivia night hosted by a drag queen. And it was a trivia night like you would never believe. And I ended up becoming a regular at this trivia night with this group of people that I'd met. And that drag queen got me doing things that I never thought I'd do in public ever. Um, but it really drew me out of my shell and gave me this energy. I became a Tupperware consultant and I didn't sell very much Tupperware, but 
every time I went to sales meeting, there was this group of people that were positive and uplifting and I'd get through to like Sunday night, I would have no energy. I'd be, you know, in a really bad place. I'd go to sales meeting on Monday night and I'd come out of that sales meeting with energy to get me through the week. So I've surrounded myself with people who are supportive and positive and, you know, just have my back and are willing to listen when I want to have a vent, um, be a shoulder to cry on when I need to, you know, let the tears out. Um, and they're champions for me as I'm moving forward, which I'm paying back to everybody else, you know, mm. to help lift them up. There's so we... much in what you've said to unpack there, Tammy. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, know. I feel like to talk, Charlene. <laughs> you speak a million miles an hour. So, but if we if we just pare that down and yeah. start with, if you are going to leave, then make sure that you've got people around you to support you. Keep it on the down low until you've got that sorted, and have a plan and have a plan B. Because <laughs> yeah. plan A doesn't plan A doesn't always work. And, uh, and I love the way that, you know, you had the kids' safety first and foremost to make sure that they were with you and uh, that's really, really important. Mm. And then, you know, seek out other people that can help you uh, from the most interesting places. Yes. I think that starts with you making a decision that you want to live a different life. So if we pair it back to the beginning, then really it's making a decision that you want to you want to be, do and have and share everything that you deserve in life and um, and then follow through on that, yeah? Yeah. Uh, the, mm. de the decision's the hardest bit. Yeah, because we get trapped, don't we? We, uh, we think this is all that I'm worth because this is what he tells me and, you know, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy because you have a look around and you're trapped physically so that you become trapped mentally. So there's all of these things. It's like you need to dare to dream. You need to dare to dream of, you know, back being a princess and, and escaping because, you know, all princesses escape. That's right. <laughs> That's right. We get away from the, from, from the dragon or from our the <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I know. And uh, and it's great to be able to reflect as to how we got where we were. Yes, and that's not something that you necessarily need to do in the moment. You need to get away first. Yes. And not and cuz you know as you've stated there Tammy, proximity is power. So Absolutely. you need to be surrounded with the people that are going to support you and love you just the way you are. Even if they don't know all the ins and outs of what's happened, they just love you as the person that you are and help you move forward. And yeah. sometimes that kindness can come from strangers. Oh, totally, mm. totally. And, and that's the thing that surprised me, um, that these strangers that I were, was meeting had such a, a big impact on my life. Um, yeah. When, when I'm feeling a bit down, you know, I can just hang out with them for a while and just hanging out with them is okay. I don't need to share everything that's going on, but just hanging out and having a bit of fun to forget everything that's, you know, been going on in the background. Um, it's just being able to let it go and and really just owning yourself because everybody's an individual and, you know, we have to stop comparing ourselves to everybody else because no one on the planet's like us. No. Like we're all individuals. So um, I've, I'm really comfortable with in my skin now and all my weirdness that I have. Um, but, you know, I love me and... You know, and I've got people around me that love me too. So, mm, isn't it interesting sometimes? Because when we're escaping, we're leaving those surroundings, and so the people that we might have relationships with when we were in that situation, we might not necessarily be able to take that with us. Um, mm. Number one for safety, and uh, and you just don't know who's. Sometimes they don't side, and sometimes they might have a different opinion. So. It is it quite frequently after the escape, it, it, it comes from people you don't know, the support. Mm. And uh, and you need to be in that position where you're open to that support as well. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Don't do it on your own. As, as I say, I think, like, the, I, I just encourage people, don't do it on your own. Because it's too, it's, it, it's too hard. It's way too hard. You can't. You can't do it on your own. Mm. So well, that, that's fantastic. And look at where you are now. I know, right? <laughs> it's so fabulous. It is so fabulous. And though we look back and it seems somewhat simpler than it was at the time in retrospect, you know, it's that hindsight window. But when we're going through that and a lot of our listeners are going through that, just know that there is hope, there is light at the end of the tunnel and, you know, just exactly what Tammy's saying, keep it on the down low, 
uh, you know, and um, and surround yourself with people that are going to support you moving forward. Now, you've done some wonderful things on this side. You've um, created some great intellectual property that you're sharing now with businesses in and around mental health and helping them identify people in uh, in the workplace that are going to need assistance and tooling people up so that they're prepared for the conversations and for you know mental health first aid. Yes. So it's not they're not or they're not training to be psychologists or psychiatrists. They're just training to be able to identify what the challenge is and be able to point people in the right direction. Well, well, have you got a little bit of a time that you can maybe share with us a little bit about that? Because yeah. I know some of our listeners will be really interested. Yeah. So um, a lot everybody knows about physical first aid. You know, just about everybody I know has done a physical first aid course at some point. You know, if you're a parent, you've got to do physical first aid on your kids whether it's a Band-Aid or, you know, broken arms, uh, but not too many people think of mental health first aid. And so just like the physical first aid, there's an action plan that you can follow, but it's being able to, we give people the skills to be able to sit and have a conversation with someone when we notice things are not right. And hopefully we're intervening early um, when there are just there are some problems with someone's mental health, not necessarily that they've got a diagnosis or if they've got a diagnosis and they're having a period of being unwell, that they've got support and also if they're in crisis as well. So it's very much teaching people how to listen and communicate non-judgmentally, um, having access to information that they can then pass on to people, um, letting them know, like most times, it's just being an ear for people and giving people support and validating what they're going through, but then also encouraging them to go and get that professional help. And it and it could it's the appropriate professional help. So it could be a GP or a psychologist or a psychiatrist, but in the case of people with domestic violence, it could be the most appropriate professional is a domestic violence crisis accommodation service because you need somewhere to stay, you know, and that's the distress that's being caused for you right now. So we talk about all of that stuff and then what can we do for ourselves? So the other supports, so that's the self-help stuff online, exercise, diet, meditation, connecting with community groups, support groups, supportive family and friends um, and making connections that way. So it takes people through those skills to be able to support someone else, to notice it, have the conversation. Um, and when you notice people are in crisis, if they're in a really bad place, so, for example, if they if someone was saying that they want to end it all or they want to just go to sleep and never wake up, that would be indications that they might be thinking about suicide. So we teach people how to ask the question, are you having thoughts of suicide and what to do if they say yes? Mm, so, so, so relevant. Yeah. I mean, yes. so relevant. Yeah. So, yes, you've been on a uh, fascinating journey to get to where you are now and now you're in an opportunity where you can pay it forward and make a difference for others. I'm excited about your new book that is in pre-production. Are you allowed to tell us a little bit about the book? Yeah, so the, the book, it will be called uh, Set Yourself on Fire, How, The Quest to Find Your Inner Phoenix because everything's about the phoenix with me. Um, and I do spell things differently, so I don't literally mean people to go and set themselves on fire, but it's set yourself, so the soul that's embodied in your life form on fire, and it's spelled P-H-I-R-E. So it's a little bit of a my journey, so how, I, how I've become, what I term myself now as the original phoenix, um, how I did my journey, and then taking people through what it means to be a phoenix in, in my regard. So I've already said it's passionate, hopeful, young at heart, noetic, indomitable and extraordinary. And then taking people through the framework to get there. So building the pyre that you're going to burn away. So it's all that pain, shame, indignity, regret stuff. Um, reframing that with some fuel. So taking back your power, um, becoming your own hero, unearthing any skills, talents, strengths, energizing yourself with good food, sleep and nutrition um, and then using a language that's positive and uplifting and then you're setting fire to all of that stuff with a purpose that's true to the heart, set intentions, take some risks and face your fears and then enjoy the process to then rise up as the phoenix and it's iterative so it's a circular thing so it doesn't have to be used when everything's going completely wrong. You could, it could just be I'm having a really crap week this week how can I use that Phoenix process 
to change the energy that's happening this week. Mm. So that's kind of what the book will be about. Um, and then there's be programs, coaching programs and retreats and stuff that will flow on from that. Event. Oh, sounds fantastic, Tammy. And our listeners love, they love tangible techniques and tangible tools that can make a difference for them. Is there something from the book or your program that you could share with our listeners today that's a tangible thing they can walk away with that can help them move forward and set themselves on fire? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that I do is um, the becoming your own hero part. So you can get a piece of paper and just draw it into four piece, four quadrants and in the top corner, I want you, you can, I want you to describe what you're going to look like in 10 years' time. And that, you know, that's and you can be, I want you to be really outrageous. What do you want your hero, which is you in 10 years' time, what do you want that to look like? Who are you going to be surrounded by? Um, what's your day going to look like? Where are you going to be living? Uh, what car are you going to be driving? All that type of stuff. Then in the, the next corner. I want you to put down the things that you might need to do to, to learn to get to that point. Um, the bottom, bottom corner is what would a day look like for you in that space? And then, oh, do you know what? I can't even remember what I put in the fourth one. Oh, that's really bad. <laughs> I've had so much stuff going through my brain. Let's just use three for the moment. So, And then on the back, then you turn that piece of paper over. And then you write down what's the steps that you're going to do to go to get to where you, you want to be. So if 10 years is too big a, a time frame, which quite often it is, what do you want your life to look like in a month? Absolutely. You know, it's, that's a very similar process to that I use to get from where I was to where I am. Yeah. And it does, it starts with lists about what you want your life to look like. Yeah. And then, you know, the reality of where you really are and what needs to change. And then that series of implementing the quick wins and focusing on the pattern and taking massive action. I love it, Tammy. Yeah. You know what? There is only one truth and uh, and it's beautiful. I feel that you're a sister light worker oh, and, yeah. and that we're here to raise the frequency of the planet and albeit one heart at a time, that's okay. That's why we've both become professional speakers so that we can stand in an auditorium and uh, share the good news with lots of people at the same time. It's yes. so exciting. Yes. So you've got um, you've got one book out, and that was a collaborative book. That's yep. so. So I'll I'll hold up. So that's this one, which is called Garden of Love. So if you would like a signed copy, you can um, let me know, and otherwise you can get it on Amazon as a, a ebook. And it, all, all the proceeds from the ebook go to a charity in India to help um, children over there. Excellent. That's fantastic. And you've also got a special offer that you're offering our listeners today. Could you take us through the offering and the special price point that you're offering for our listeners today? Yes, absolutely. So part of the process that I do to take people through this Phoenix process is to do a resilience assessment to see where people are sitting in the moment because resilience is not something you're born with. You develop it as you grow as a child um, with all that stuff that you do when you learn to eat and walk. And uh, so as adults, we forget that we need to keep working on our resilience skills. So I can do an assessment and do a debrief, which was normally $250. But for the listeners today, I'm going to do that for $100. And what that will, the report will show you how resilient you are across six domains of resilience whether you're trending towards being more resilient or less resilient. And then we can go through the process of identifying what are some steps, some quick wins to build up those the resilient skills that actually need some work. So that's the offer today. And if people send an email through to me at info at phoenixinitiative.com.au, then I can sort them out with a link to, the, to do the resilience assessment. So Phoenix is P-H-Y-N-I-X. Excellent. And I do believe uh, Rose has popped that on the screen and also we'll put it in the body of the information today. And also, thanks, Rose. She's amazing. <laughs> She's so quick. Rose, you're like everywhere. 
<laughs> she's like octopusy. Yes, she's everywhere. So she's uh, also going to pop that in the feed underneath as well. Lovely. So resilience assessment, which is normally two fifty, you can pick it up today for a hundred dollars. And to find out where you are and what you need to move, it is important. It's not something you can't Google the answer. You can't YouTube the answer. You need to go through a process that's been that someone else has done themselves and got themselves where they need to be. Someone who's a trained professional and knows what they're talking about that can assist you move forward and to make the difference so that thank you so much tammy for reaching out and letting us share that beautiful offer with the listeners today hey it's a late um it's amazing now when do you think the book will be in release just so that we can tell our listeners oh um i've set lots of deadlines <laughs> um, but life life's been getting in the way i'm i'm hoping it will be released around about april next year oh that's fantastic yeah. that's Excellent, excellent. Yes. Fantastic. I'm so excited. Now, you're based in ACT, is that right? I am. I excellent. am. And I'm so ready. if you have uh, if you really want a little bit extra of Tammy, um, I know that she runs the Speakers Tribe in uh, ACT. So they're always looking for people who want to come along and learn how to speak publicly and master communication for influence. So I know that she's always looking for additional people to come along and join the clan. And it is true. Absolutely. That proximity is power. Isn't that right? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. It's That's so how cool. I got introduced to you, Charlene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is about proximity. And we were so blessed. Tammy and I shared the stage together um, for a TEDx presentation, which was, my gosh, was that February last year already? Yes. That's like a lifetime ago. <laughs> how, how, how? It was like 10 years. But yeah. how things have... Just, you know, time does expand for us. That's all I say every day and it's so true, it's so true. Tammy, thank you so much for jumping on today and sharing your beautiful story and being in our proximity for the Healing Through Love show and sharing with our listeners how to move from where they are to where they want to be using your fabulous frameworks and sharing your beautiful resilience tool and also talking about your book. Thank you, Tammy. We look forward to sharing this space with you again soon. It's been an absolute pleasure. See you later, Tammy. Right. Now, as Tammy, as Tammy pops away, we're going to have Rose jump back on. Hi, Rose. How are you, gorgeous girl? I'm goodly. How are you? Now, for those who don't know, I'm amazing. I'm warm because only because I'm standing under the heater. <laughs> Outside that, it's chilly here in Adelaide. But it's chillier where you are in Tasmania, Rose. It is. It's currently 14 degrees, but it is sunny. It is sunny. That's, we have to be happy for the small things. Now, Rose, could you just share, well, just in a minute or so, the good news about how we're moving forward with a healing through love. It's not a pamper day. It's something a little bit different, but it's for the men here in Tassie. So can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah, it's a, a men's retreat. Um, we've been asked since we in, we were inaugurated in 2018 that when are we going to do something for men so since i'm down here in tassie and it's such a beautiful place i decided that we would um in in with charlene um that we would have a men's retreat and so i'm in um talking to uh, other providers of men's retreats to see what would be the best way moving forward so i'm having a meeting tonight with somebody he's in the uk but he actually runs a, a men's um, group. Um, he's a quite famous person um, and he's obviously run quite a few retreats. So he's going to give me some ideas. And I've been in touch with a couple of other men as well. So, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. It'll be uh, probably June next year, which I know is beginning of winter but I'll make sure that it's in a really nice warm place. So going away at winter can be fun. I've just come back from a trip through McLaren Vale um, in, in the middle of winter and it was even more special because there were fires and, oh, it was just spectacular. I loved every moment of it. So winter is still fine. We've got our local one in Adelaide coming up in May next year. And in the meantime, we're preparing pamper, pamper packs for those who are escaping the challenges of family and domestic violence and those packages are handed to the girls as they leave. So uh, if you are in a position to help and pay it forward, if you've got um, items or if you know of some surplus of stuff that we can put in the pamper packs, please reach out to us, let us know. You can contact us on Healing Through Love. Uh, we're on Facebook. <laughs> we're pretty much everywhere, Rose, are we not? <laughs> uh, yes, you, uh, our email address is um, hello at htlaustralia.org. 
and um, yes, yeah, so you can uh, email us there and just put pamper pamper packs in the in the subject line, or you can go to our website, which is um, h www.htlaustralia.org. Excellent. Fantastic. And we have got some amazing guests coming up in the next couple of months, guys. If you would like to put your hand up and be interviewed in this space, make sure that you reach out to Rose or myself and we can send you the details. As always, it's a privilege and pleasure. See you later, guys. <laughs>